All right, everybody. If I could have your attention. I certainly want to welcome all of you uh, to the sunrise service on Easter morning. Um, really cool to be here uh, as we celebrate the victory that Jesus won for us. Uh, we're so thankful that he calls us each by name to participate in the victory that he won uh, with him. So um, let's get started. Let's all arise for prayer. Father God, Lord Jesus, thank you so much, Lord, for the cruel cross. Thank you so much, Lord, for rising from the dead. Thank you for uh, the victory you won over our sin, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. We uh, will never be able to do anything that uh, could ever pay for that, Lord. Uh, you paid the ultimate price, and we thank you for that. Uh, we invite you to be in our midst, Lord. Uh, we invite you to be here, uh, that your spirit would move among us, Lord, and then talk to us in the ways that um, it needs, in the messages that we need to hear, Lord, from you. So be with us, be with the speakers, uh, and we just pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So if you look on your programs, uh, you'll see we're going to be singing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Um, it's kind of like the classic hymn, but with a little twist, so... Uh, follow the leaders, if you would. So, thank you.
roll the stone away. Was it a thief? No. It was an angel. Mary says he lives again. Do you believe? Yes. He is my Savior. Thomas was a doubter until he saw for himself. Jesus even let him touch spear wounds in his side. He is risen. He is risen. Yes, my Lord, he is risen today. There are linen to blood stains. That is all that remains. There's no temple down, he said, and in three days I, I will rebuild it. Jesus had to die before we all could be saved, and that is how God willed it. Those who had not crucified thought from a song called His Heart Beats, and it is sung by an artist named Andrew Peterson. And we highly recommend that you listen to the full song in its entirety. It's very profound, and if you have time to dwell and meditate on it, um, we highly recommend and encourage that. Um, again, this is a small portion of it. <coughs> so we will read that for you now. His Heart Beats by Andrew Peterson. His heart beats, his blood begins to flow, waking up what was dead a moment ago. And his heart beats know everything has changed, because the blood that brought us peace with God is racing through his veins. And his heart beats. He breathes in, his living lungs expand. The heavy air surrounding death turns to breath again. He breathes out. He is word and flesh once more. The Lamb of God slain for us is a lion ready to roar in his heart beats. So crown him Lord of life, crown him Lord of love, crown him Lord of all. He took one breath and put death to death. Where is your sting, O grave? How grave is your defeat? I know, I know his heart beats.
Can everyone hear me okay? Excellent. <coughs> Greetings to each and every one of you this morning. What a great privilege to be here, isn't it? On a sunrise service on, on Easter Sunday. What a beautiful day. The sun's come up. I, I don't know. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't sleep very good last night. So I got up pretty early, and, and I went for a walk. And saw the sun coming up, and I, and I thought, what a beautiful sunrise. You know, I know a few, a few years back, uh, when we had sunrise service, we started, it was still dark out, and slowly as, as the service went on, it got lighter and lighter and lighter. And I thought about the, 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 the two women that went to the, to the empty tomb. We got a, we got a good depiction of the, of the tomb over here, I noticed. Um, he went to the empty tomb and saw that it was, there was no one there. And the, and the angel said, why seek ye the living among, among the dead? So we serve a risen Lord today, and as it was sung, sung so well in, in, the, uh, in the hymn there, we serve her. He is risen. We serve a risen Lord. And so the chains, we talked about amazing grace, and the chains are gone. What's, what are those chains? There's so many chains that we can have in our lives today. We can have chains. Of, it can be sin. It can be hardship. It can be um, different things that, that, that weigh us down from, from uh, Satan and, sin, and, and, and the devil, and it's like... We are so privileged to know that we serve a risen Lord and that he broke those chains and that he, he was victorious over death. First he was victorious over sin on the cross and then he broke the chains of death when he rose again. So we serve a hero, we serve a champion, we serve a victor. What a great day. For us, for us as Christians, this is the greatest day we could have. And so I just wanted to talk just a little bit today um, uh, about... Uh, why are we here? You know, Jesus paid it all. We, we sing the song, he paid it all. You know, our chains are gone. I mean, there's, there's hope for salvation. But why are we here? And, and uh, last, last Sunday, the, the Sunday school taught us. I mean, they kind of they brought us the whole Easter story uh, through songs and stuff. And I don't know if any of you got it, but at the end of the, at the, end of the um, program, they handed out these, these little cards here, these little bookmarks. And I saw this bookmark and it got me to thinking a little bit about salvation and about, our, about, about what was written on this bookmark. You know, we look at the, the, the Holy Bible and it's a, it's a big book. It's, there's a lot of pages in there. There's a lot of chapters. There's a, there's a lot of verses. And this little bookmark that they, they handed out last week was really interesting and really neat to me. On one side it says the good news. So well, what's the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is our Savior. And he had, He's available to us if we call on Him. That's the good news today. That's, that's the news that we have, that we have to, to have in our, in our hearts and we have to share with others. If you look at the other side of here, it kind of tells us all about, our, about why we're here and where we're, where we're headed and what, we're, what, what our purpose is. It's really, it's called the Romans Road to, to Salvation. And, and what it does is it spells out in five little steps kind of the whole purpose, the reason. So it says there's a problem. And what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is, is that it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, I look at that and I'm like, boy, that's right. I mean, none of us are perfect. And we're like, whoa, that's just how we are. We're, we're human. We're all, we're, you know, none of us are perfect. But then it says that there's consequences. And it says, what are those consequences? It says in Romans 6.23, it says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So now, now it's getting really personal. Now it's saying the wages of sin is death. So it's like, we have no hope. There's, well, where's the hope? Where's, where's, the, where's the opportunity? And right after that, there's the solution. It says the solution is, in Romans 9, 8, it says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And that's the week we've just come through. We've come through this Passion Week and we've heard of Jesus coming as a Savior, coming, coming as a King, I should say, to the, to the Jewish people. They, they thought this is the next chosen one, you know. And then next thing you know, he's alone. He's, re, he's rejected. He's betrayed. He's, he's uh, spit upon. He's scourged. And he's crucified. And, where's, and all of a sudden it's like, where's your leader? Where's your leader? I thought he was a yeah, great, great person. But then today, today is the day we celebrate. Because today is the day we celebrate that he rose again from the grave. And that is a great, great victory. He rose and he conquered. Not only did he conquer Satan, he conquered sin and offer that, that blood that covers all of our sins today if we, if we turn to him. But he also 
went to the uh, you know went 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 to the uh, to the part where he basically is in heaven today, and he's interceding for us. He knows that we can't do it on our own, and that's the beauty of salvation. Is we don't have to. We don't have to do it on our own. He, he offers that, that hope. He offers that help if we reach to him. So that brings the next spot on here that says the, the response. Ah, so there has to be a choice. There's a choice that has to be made. And what's our choice going to be? What choice are we going to choose today in, in, in our lives for, for the outcome of our life? Are we going to choose God? Are we going to choose salvation? Or are we going to choose self and we're going to just say, hey, you know what, that's... That's a good plan, it's a, neat, it's a neat plan and stuff, but that's just not really for me. We have to make that choice. And God gives us the opportunity. He doesn't force us. He doesn't force us to do anything. He gives us that opportunity. And so, um, but, but if we make that choice, and if we choose Jesus Christ, and if we follow Him, He will be with us every step of the way. And, and then uh, the last thing on this little bookmark, it says it says an assurance. If we call upon Jesus, He will save us. And many of us in this room know that. He has saved us. And we look to him and we praise him in this day. So, so thankful for all that. Um, you know, if, if you look at uh, this book, Mark, I was, I was considering it as, as, I, as I read through that uh, last Sunday. It's a pretty small piece of paper. But it covers the essentials of this whole book. In just this little book, Mark. And I'm like, if you have a book, and many of you have read, read books. But some of you love to read books. I know Heidi loves to read books. She's a big book reader. Uh, but people love to read books. And what do you use a bookmark for? You mark a page, right? You mark a page, you mark a chapter, you mark a certain phrase or something. You mark your book. And I got to thinking about our lives. And each of our lives is a book. Each of our lives is a book. We all got something that's being written about us. And so I'd ask you, which chapter are you in? In your life, what chapter are you in? Are you in chapter three? You know, are you getting just to the good part? Or are you just thinking, oh, I'm, tough. I'm in chapter one, I'm in chapter three. Are you in chapter 13? Where it's getting, you know, we're getting well into the book and there's not a whole lot of chapters left. I would say today that many of us don't know. Because we don't know if we were before, before a short story, before a long novel. It's, got, it's all in God's hands, isn't it? Whether we're, whether our lives are, we may be in chapter three, but if it's only a four chapter book, we you got some, uh, you got a lot to get, get, a lot to get accomplished in a short amount of time. And because of that, I would say it doesn't matter from that perspective which chapter of our lives we're in. I would say what matters is, do we have the book, and is it in the chapter of our lives that we're in today? So if we're in the early in our lives. And, and, and we've got that bookmark, and we just take that, that, that bookmark of salvation with us every chapter, every day, every hour, and we keep it with us, and we refer to that, and we look to that for our salvation, God will take care of us. He'll provide it. You know, I, I, worked with a, I worked with a man, his name was uh, Larry. Uh, worked with him for quite a few years. He's retired now, but uh, had a great relationship with him, a wonderful man. Um, he, he, was, he was a drug addict. He, he was um, a convict. A thief. A robber. He had about to check all the boxes of things you probably wouldn't want to be. That was Larry. That's, how, that's who he was and that's how he was. And so Larry got the privilege of going to prison. And he spent some time in prison. But while he was there, God changed him. He found God. And the reason he found God was because he was, he was a heroin addict. And when he got into prison, he couldn't get the heroin that he so dearly needed, he thought, in his life. And so he said he had to find something to put in his life to take the place of his addiction, of, of the chains that he had in his life. He had this terrible chain of addiction, and he couldn't break it on his own. But I asked him, I said, I said so Larry, how did, you, how did you get rid of your addiction? And and I'll do this in uh, Larry's terms because he's kind of a picture of a 60-year-old black man, pretty big man, uh, but pretty down to earth. He's like, Mr. Dan, he goes, it's all about, it's not about us, it's about God. He said, you got to find something that's stronger than your addiction. 
And he said, the only thing I could find was Jesus Christ. The only thing he could find that was stronger than his addiction was Jesus Christ. What a great story. It's just amazing. So, um, that's why I say it. I said, you know, where are we at in our lives today? Where, where are we at? And do we have the bookmark with us? Because that is all that really matters. Um, I guess in, in, in closing, I don't want to take too long. Johnny said I only had two hours. So, um, I guess the last thing I, I, was, I, I, was, I would say, just someone in closing is, Praise God for the fact that we have we serve the risen Lord and we have that hope in our heart. And just remember, while there's life, there's hope. There's always hope. And that's what we've got to hang on to. You know, uh, Dad died about two months ago. And uh, it was a wonderful thing to watch someone you love pass from this life and return to with Jesus Christ. He had, he had the bookmark. His whole life, he had the bookmark every time. Excuse me. Every time I remember seeing him, no matter what part of the life he was in, that bookmark was there. That's all that mattered. And so when he passed, you know what he said? He goes, uh, he said, I'm going to see, I'm going to see Uncle Willis, I'm going to see Uncle Dan, I'm going to see these people. He said, we're going to be waiting inside the gates. Waiting inside the gates for everybody to come. And that's the, that's the hope we got to work today. And that's why we can rejoice and say, he lives. Praise God. Thank you.
pretty cool seeing everybody up here, singing, speaking, hearing the truth again. And uh, Dan mentioned a coworker of his, and I figure I might as well bring up on mine as well. Um, I work with a guy, and he's got an interesting take on psychology and personality. And anyway, he, uh, he's been on a thing lately where um, he boils everything down to the focus of people. He's like, people are either focusing on life or they're focusing on death. And he hasn't accepted Christ yet. Um, but it's kind of an interesting, I mean, take on on life, really. We can either focus on just the death and we'll be eaten up constantly and life's going to be really hard. Or we can focus on today, the Easter day, when we know Jesus is alive. And that makes life enjoyable. It makes us, we have, you know, liberty in Christ, is all would say. Um, he also mentioned, uh, in one of his uh, letters, that uh, the law brings death and the spirit brings life. And most of you probably know this or heard it, but um, when Moses brought the law down from God off of, off of Mount Sinai, that was when the children of Israel were uh, worshiping a calf. And um, to kind of paraphrase, uh, basically Moses had the Levites go through and kind of have a purge. So the law brought a purge and about 3,000 of the Israelites died on that day. And then contrast that with when Jesus arose and uh, Pentecost and Spirit came down on all the apostles and Peter was preaching the gospel um, in its earliest form. And um, about 3,000 believed and were saved. And it's really neat to know just that correlation between the law bringing the death of 3,000 and the Spirit and Jesus bringing the life of 3,000. And Good Friday is a good day because our chains were put to the fire. They were our sin was taken to the cross with Jesus. But today is the day that we have life. The day that Jesus actually conquered everything. And we can live in him and in the spirit and in truth. And refine ourselves as best we can even though we can't do it without him. <laughs> so anyway, we're just so thankful. And it's good to see you guys here. Um, uh, we have casserole and uh, probably some egg casseroles going on at the church today. And there's going to be overflow seating actually in the fellowship hall here on the other side. So I'd say, I don't know, there's probably going to be some ushering, go eat some food. Um, I'm actually going to have a prayer for the food as well right now. So <laughs> um, with that, um, let's uh, have a closing prayer. And Dear Father in heaven, our God, our Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the life you've given us, the spirit that you have for us, the conquering of death, the ability we have to leave our sins with you and to have a hope of eternity with you, even though we are not worthy. Um, we praise you for this and we thank you so much. Um, we also thank you for the ability to be together as a church to worship you, um, give you all the glory, and um, pray that uh, we would always have that uh, bookmark in our life and we'd always continue to go back to you because we know that you are faithful and you will always bring us back. Um, we pray for the food that's been prepared. We pray that we bless those that spent their time and effort in uh, preparing it and uh, pray that you would uh, make sure that they understand our appreciation and uh, ask everything in Jesus' name. Amen.